All right, welcome back to the Young Turks. I'm your host, Cenk Huger, Jerry Jackson, producer, and Jesus Godoy directing. Now, a fascinating story and a tragic story of uh, bullying in schools and what should be done about it. That's a very complicated question, as you're about to find out. We're going to talk to Jessica Bennett of Newsweek, who wrote about it. Uh, Jessica, welcome back to the Young Turks. Thanks for having me. Uh, great having you. Uh, first, let's start by talking about Phoebe Prince. Can you tell me her story? Who is she and what happened? Sure. So Phoebe Prince is a 15-year-old Massachusetts girl who commits suicide in January of this year after what the district attorney in Massachusetts has alleged was a three-month campaign of intensive bullying by her peers. And basically what's happened in the aftermath of that is that six students who are all in their teens in high school have been charged with bullying with felony crimes, and they face upwards of 10 years in jail. All right. Now, how did they bully her and why did they bully her? Well, it's a complicated story, as you can imagine, as teen bullying all often is. But uh, what we understand is that Phoebe had a relationship with two boys at the school. The two boys had girlfriends. Those girlfriends got mad. They got their friends in on the action. And they started calling her names, slut, bitch, things like that. And it kind of escalated from there. There was no actual physical contact, except for an empty soda can thrown at her from a car window. You know, the thing that drives me crazy about that, Jessica, among many other things, is right. that uh, is the guys, right? I, I get why the girls are mad. They're yeah. kids, and they're going to strike out and do stupid stuff they shouldn't do. But the guys, you slept with her. Why right. are you attacking someone you slept with? And if she's a whore and a slut, what does that make you? So well, that's true. But the thing is, in some of these cases, so it's six students charged, four girls, two guys. The two guys are the two guys alleged to have slept with her. But it's not even clear in both of the boys' cases that they actually were part of the bullying. So the two boys are charged with statutory rape because when they did allegedly sleep with her, she was under the age of consent. But it's not clear what direct role they actually played in the bullying, which complicates things further. Were they above the age of consent? Yes, they were both 17 at the time, and she was 15, and the age of consent oh, is 16. Nonsense. nonsense. Right, it's a very nonsense. rare charge to bring against students in consen consensual sex. That shouldn't even be on the, the, the books. I mean, that, that's, they have to fix the law there. It's, it's, it's insane to charge someone who's 17 for having sex with a 15-year-old. One's a junior, the other one's a sophomore, or a freshman, or whatever it is. I mean, that's only happened literally millions of times in America. Perhaps exactly. billions. Okay. Right. So, okay. But, of course, that's not why they're going after him. They're going after him for the bullying. Now, she wound up killing herself, right? Yes. So, now, now that's disastrous. Now, here comes the twist in the story, though, and there are many twists. Um, what had, had Phoebe tried that before? Let me put it that way. Right. Well, it's since been revealed that there were grand jury documents leaked to another reporter at Slate that revealed that, indeed, yes, she had tried to commit suicide before. She had struggled with depression. She cut herself often. You know, this was not a girl in a good mental state. So while perhaps the bullying put her over the edge, can we really, the question, I think, is can we really say that she was, as the media keeps calling it, quote-unquote, bullied to death? So then the next question is, how many states have this as being illegal? Like Massachusetts doesn't, so they're going after these people in 88 different ways, right? Right. Uh, but how many states actually have bullying as a crime? Well, I'm not sure the exact number. There's 45 states that have some kind of anti-bullying law on the books. Most of that means that schools are required to have prevention policies. It doesn't necessarily state that bullying, quote-unquote, is a crime, so it gets very convoluted, which is why the district attorney in Massachusetts is using all of these other crimes like stalking, like criminal harassment, to charge these kids because you can't, it's hard to define what makes bullying a crime. Okay. And, you know, Jessica, I don't know, we're talking to Jessica Bennett from Newsweek who wrote about this really interesting case, and the whole thing is interesting uh, phenomenon. Do you have a sense of where the community is? Are they, do they want the kids to be charged or do they not want them to be charged? I think that, by and large, 
in the initial aftermath of this, they were completely outraged and did want the kids to be charged because they felt like the school hadn't done enough to prevent it. These kids were still in school. They didn't suffer any punishment. And also because most of the records about these kids are not public record, you know, none, no one in the community knew whether they'd been suspended or penalized in any way for the bullying that had gone on up until then. But that said, you know, this is a small town in western Massachusetts. It's about 17,000 people. This has really divided the town in many ways because they're not used to media attention like this and crime like this. Right. And look, so now let's get to the heart of it. I, this isn't a crime. Uh, it's horrible what happened. And it happens a lot, and I love that they're trying to prevent it. And, and look, to give you a sense, when I was a kid, I fancied myself like in a heroic role. Because, you know, you're a kid, and you got these visions in your head. So, and I was a big kid, and I liked to fight anyway. So whenever somebody tried to bully someone else, I'd step in and say, fight me instead. Right? So oh, I, I, look a little vigilant to yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could paint it as like, liberal hero, or you can paint it as a weird vigilante psycho kid who likes to get in fights, okay? So you, either way, but I didn't like bullies, right? I never liked right. bullies, and I find them outrageous, and I never understood that whole thing of pick on people who are weaker than you. I, I've mm -hmm. always hated that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm obviously not pro-bullying, but on the other hand, Jessica, how, how do we make this a crime? Do, then isn't almost everything that goes on in high school a crime then? Right. Well, I think that's the question. You know, if we criminalize calling somebody a slut or writing nasty messages on their Facebook page, where does it stop? So in Massachusetts, the law now says that anything that, quote unquote, creates a hostile environment can be considered bullying, and thus you could prosecute someone for related charges. And in the school system, they have this new anti-bullying policy that says even, quote unquote, leaving someone out counts as bullying if you do it repeatedly. <laughs> So where do you draw the line? You know, can we not gossip if I gossip about a coworker and they go and kill themselves? Am I held responsible for this? It really, it's kind of a slippery slope, in my opinion. Look, the whole world is a hostile environment. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, by the definition of everything, you always leave people out. I guess I could be hosting the show with a conservative, but I'm not. Have I created, have I bullied the conservatives? Right. I mean... It's absurd. The whole th I mean, but the yeah, problem and then, is it's it's catching on, right? I mean, this is there. People are taking this very seriously, and and this is a real phenomenon, right? This isn't something. Oh yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, people are outraged by this, and as I'm sure you know, there have been recent, more recent suicides related to anti-gay bullying in the last couple of weeks. So this is getting a lot of media attention. The public is really outraged by it. And I think that it's putting pressure on government and on law enforcement to really take action and do something about it. Now, look, I, I think making it a criminal I issue uh, is wrong and absurd. But on the other hand, this anti-bullying policies and surge, if you will, it, it's kind of working, isn't it? Yeah, um, none of this is to say that prevention doesn't work. And prevention in schools in particular, talking about bullying, paying attention to the role of bystanders like you, people who stand up and say, no, I'm not going to let you bully this person, has been proven to be very effective. And we've actually seen rates of bullying decrease slightly over the last decade as a result of this. So prevention works, but I think that using criminal law enforcement to enforce this doesn't. So, uh, you know, I got a question on that, too, but l let me actually uh, finish up the numbers there because, um, you know, there's a sense that uh, bullying is on the rise. And, it, of course, it's a lot to do with the media coverage. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you remember all those shark attacks uh, yeah. it in 2000. <laughs> there were no more yeah. shark attacks than before. They were just bored and just wanted to run some right. stories about shark attacks, right? So now, is that the case here? Is there more bullying now than there was before or less? Well, my view is that there's not more bullying now. I've looked back at various data over decades and talked to a lot of researchers about this, and they say that the levels of bullying have remained relatively the same, and as I said, even dipped slightly over the past decade. Of course, there's more and more articles about it, and these cases have a much higher visibility with the 24-hour news cycle, so it may seem like this is worse. And it, that's not to say that this is not a huge, huge problem, but is it a worse? problem? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't get that sense at all. I mean, look, first of all, I went to school in America. Was there bullying in our school? Of course there was, right? right? And it's not like it's a new phenomenon. There's been bullying not since America, but since the beginning of time when 
the stronger kid picked on the weaker kid. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a new phenomenon. But I think the fact that it's going down is certainly partly due to these policies and the renewed attention on it. So that definitely, in my mind, has an upside. If they just left it at prevention and education, I think that would be the right way to go. Right. And I mean, in certain extreme cases, you know, everybody is now talking about this student from Rutgers who threw himself off the George Washington Bridge in New York. The kids charged in his case who live streamed his sexual escapade on the web for everyone at the school to see are charged with privacy invasion. That is a real crime. But when we're dealing with these kind of gray area crimes, calling names, saying nasty stuff, it's very different. And I think one of the things, you know, cyberbullying is different. It's added a new element to this. You can't wash it off a bathroom stall. You, it's more potent in many ways, and it often feels like the world is laughing along with you. So the texture of bullying has changed, but that's not to say that it's actually gotten worse, per se. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on all that. I was actually ex going to go to Rutgers exactly on that. So now you partly answered that question is to, because they broke violence, uh, privacy laws there. And we're mm -hmm. talking to Jessica Bennett from Newsweek. Uh, but Jessica, is that the standard you think if you've broken some other law that of course we should prosecute you on that? Like for example, if that kid had not jumped off the bridge, I would have still prosecuted those guys for grossly violating his pri privacy, right? Yeah, that's an interesting point because certainly I think that they still would have been prosecuted and still should have been prosecuted even if he hadn't committed suicide. So maybe that is a good standard. Right, where we don't judge it based on the outcome, we judge it on whether you actually broke a law or not. Right, right, exactly. All right, good. We've got agreement. I know, solution. I, okay, that's what we do on this program. We do solutions. I know. <laughs> All right, Jessica Bennett, as always, a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us.